the only real hope and change you'll ever get is from God. It's going to come from the Lord or it's not going to come at all. It's going to come when you admit that you can't do it and that you've got to have His help. Luke chapter 12 verse 13 through 21. Someone in the crowd said to him, Teacher, tell my brother to divide the inheritance with me. Jesus replied, Man, who appointed me a judge or an arbiter between you? Then he said to them, Watch out, be on your guard against all kinds of greed. Life does not consist in abundance of possessions. And he told them this parable, The ground of a certain rich man yielding an abundant harvest. He thought to himself, What shall I do? I have no place to store my crops. Then he said, This is what I'll do. I will tear down my barns and build bigger ones. And there I will store my surplus grain. And I'll say to myself, You have plenty of grain laid up for many years. Take life easy. Eat, drink, and be merry. But God said to him, You fool, this very night your life will be demanded from you. Then who will get what you prepared for yourself? This is how it will be with whoever stores up things for themselves but is not rich towards God. I want to focus on a warning given by Jesus. Watch out. Be on your guard against all kinds of greed. This suggests to me that there are different types of greed. And under the guidance of the Lord Jesus Christ, we are to watch out against greed. Greed is something you and I need to be aware of. The man in Luke chapter 12 spent his whole life focusing on the here and the now and didn't think once about eternity. All he did was make plans. All he did was focus on making money. All he did was focus on the here and now. And look at what God called him. God called him a fool. If there is one person you don't want to call you a fool, it is God. You see, this man was so centered around his plans. I am going to do this. I am going to do that. But this is what so many people do in our age. They are so quick to say, Oh, when I am retired, I am going to travel the world. When I am retired, I am going to put my feet up and enjoy the works of my hands. When I am a millionaire, I am going to buy my dream car. In all their plans, they make no room for God. If there is one thing you need to remember about money, it is simply this. You cannot take money with you into eternity. Just a moment after death, a billionaire would be no different to a beggar on the street. Does that not make you glad that your money does not matter to God? Just imagine if you could buy your way to heaven and only the ultra-rich could go to heaven. I must be clear. There is nothing wrong with being rich or ultra rich, but there is a problem when your love for money and greed makes you focus on this world and this world alone. 1 Timothy chapter 6 verse 10 For the love of money is a root of all kinds of evil. Some people, eager for money, have wandered from the faith and pierced themselves with many griefs. The love of money and greed is why people are literally selling their souls. What is the root of all evil is the love of money. Unbelievers and even Christians are guilty of the love of money, greed, covetedness. How do I know I am a greedy person? If you are seeking the accumulation of wealth, the accumulation of things, more diligently than you are chasing after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, meekness. You are an avaricious person. Greed is loving money more than God. Greed is loving material things more than God. Greed is wanting more and more and more, even at the expense of others, even at the expense of your relationship with the Lord. Greed is why people sell their souls to the devil. The Bible has no instance of a person selling his or her soul to Satan, and it never implies that making a bargain with the devil is possible. We do see in Matthew chapter 4, verse 8 through 9, at the temptation of Jesus, Satan offers Jesus rule over earth with this temptation. Though 
at a very high price. Paul calls the devil the God of this world in 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 4. And Jesus himself later refers to Satan as the ruler of this world in John chapter 12 verse 31. So Satan offered to hand over the keys of the world to Jesus in exchange for being worshipped by the Son of God. So, in helping ourselves as believers, the devil may not offer you the world like he did to the Lord Jesus, but can offer you a job or something attractive that will give you immoral money. Or he may tempt you into cheating your way into success. Don't sell your soul because of greed. Don't compromise on God's word for money. Don't allow your relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ to take a back seat so you purse the pleasure and the joys of this life. In all that you do, remember that this life is not eternal. This life will come to an end and the houses you are aspiring to buy, the money you strive to acquire and save will not step into eternity with you. Greed shows itself in dishonesty if it will lead to gain. You see people cheating and lying on their tax returns, not knowing that the spirit avarice is working in them. The Bible does not condone such things. Jesus himself, when speaking about taxes in Mark chapter 12, verse 14 through 17, stated, Render to Caesar the things that are Caesar's, and to God the things that are God's. Greed will cause people to steal, to walk around with money and possessions that belong to others. Matthew chapter 6, verse 19. Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust destroy, and where thieves break in and steal. Unfortunately, in our day, we have a lot of ministers of the gospel and prophets who are money-driven. They are greedy for money and make a merchandise of the gift of God upon their lives and ministry. Proverbs chapter 15 verse 27 says, He that is greedy of gain troubleth his own house, but he that hateth gifts shall live. Today, several ministries do not know when not to accept gifts, more so they enforce and prophesy money out of people's pockets, thereby making a shipwreck of their ministry. The Bible says that the love of money is the root of all evil. The word love in that passage means avarice, covetedness, and greed. God is not opposed to the wealth of his people, but money must never at any point become our God. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 6, verse 24, that we cannot serve God and mammon. The greatest rival of God in the life of humans is not the devil, it is money. Jesus didn't say, we cannot serve God and the devil. He gave preference to money than the devil. The greed for money is the reason many believers have lost their faith and have backslidden. Unfortunately, the desire and crave for money can never be satisfied. The more you acquire money, the more needs you will have to attend to. The devil has robbed many believers of their faith by taking advantage of their greed. Whatever you crave for and can do anything to acquire will become the devil's snare against you. Esau was greedy for food and he lost his birthright to Jacob. Jahazi was covetedness and mindful of material wealth and he got leprosy in return. Judas Iscariot was greedy for money and he lost his eternal placement among the 12 apostles of the Lamb. Greed gets rid of the glorious future of their host. In these examples, we can find out that they all had great and bright futures, but covetedness robbed them of it. If you always desire what you do not deserve, you are greedy. If you always want what does not belong to you, by any possible means, you are covetous. And if you want to get rich at all costs, even if it means it's ungodly, you are greedy. In 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 3 says, Not given to wine, no striker, not greedy of filthy lucre, but patient, not a brawler, not covetous. Anyone who will be accounted as a minister of the gospel must not be greedy. Otherwise, they would make a shipwreck of their ministry and will bring shame to the body of Christ. Naturally, nobody ever wants a greedy person around him or her. Much more, God does not want covetous people to handle his business. Greed has no good consequence. We must therefore desist from it. Jeremiah chapter 6 verse 13 For from the least of them 
even unto the greatest of them, every one is given to covetedness. And from the prophet, even unto the priest, every one dealeth falsely. days perilous times shall come for men shall be lovers of their own selves covetous boasters proud blasphemers it takes the grace of god to change us folks how can you be saved if you're not willing to repent and the lord jesus christ said except you repent ye shall all likewise perish